Our moon exploration project started out in 1969. Sure, there have been some problems along the way, but astronomers are certain we'll get back up there pretty soon and with better knowledge and technology. However, there's an 800-year-old trick that might become way more useful than fancy GPS tech and powerful rockets. It's called the Fibo Nachi Sphere. Some scientists at a Hungarian university stumbled upon this idea while studying the moon. They believe it might be useful to better understand how the moon spins and how it's a bit squished while it goes around Earth. You might believe that our planet and its satellite are these perfect little spheres floating in space. Well, that's not true. They are in fact like slightly deflated soccer balls because of all the gravity, rotating movements, and tides. The GPS technology we use here on Earth is already adapted to these less than perfect ball proportions. Remember, our planet is a bit flattened at its poles. If we're going to make a map system for the moon, we need to do the same for its shape, called a selenoid, or what scientists call the moon's version of our Earth's shape. Since the moon is less compressed than our planet, scientists have been taking a shortcut until now. They've been looking at our satellite as a simple ball shape. However, with all these new projects coming up in the following decades and even some exciting trips we might end up having on the moon, we need to be more precise. Scientists now believe we should get the real data and start drawing an accurate picture of the moon. Here's where the Fibonacci sphere comes in handy. It's a clever solution that's been used by mathematicians to spread points out evenly on a ball. Scientists recently used it to map around 100,000 spots on the moon using data previously collected by NASA. And what they found was crucial for our understanding of the moon's shape. For instance, we now know that our satellite's poles are about 0.3 miles closer to the center compared to the moon's equator. Sure, it might seem like a tiny detail, but if we adjust our GPS software accordingly before we land on the moon again, it might save us from getting lost up there. This level of math hasn't been done since the 60s for the moon, but we already know it works wonders here at home, so it only makes scientists better prepared for future missions. This isn't the first time people have used Fibonacci's findings to come up with clever solutions. We've also seen it put to work in finance, agriculture, and in computer science. Let's see where it all came from. Legend has it that the Italian mathematician Fibonacci wasn't really that interested in mathematical sequences at first, but rather in... rabbits? So, he came up with this interesting puzzle. What happens if you place a pair of rabbits in a certain space for a year? He also set some theoretical rules. For starters, all those bunnies come in boy-girl pairs, and they can start reproducing after just a month. Each month, each bunny pair adds one more pair of bunny offspring. The last rule was that all bunnies would be invincible for the year. Doing the math, he got this series of numbers. 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, and so on. If you look at this series again, you'll notice that every number is the sum of the two before it. The first two? That's your starting bunny pair. Next, you'll see the number two, which is the first pair and their first offspring pair. Word caught on about this interesting sequence and math lovers began studying it more closely. They started seeing this pattern very often in nature, like in how leaves grow on a plant or how seeds arrange on sunflowers. There's even a little experiment you can do to check it out. Start by grabbing some paper and a pen. Try drawing the Fibonacci spiral. Start with a tiny circle, then go bigger and bigger using those Fibonacci numbers. The first circle should just be a tiny dot on the paper or the equivalent of zero. Next circle, one unit. Another circle, still one unit. Keep it going and you'll see that the circles form this spiral pattern. Even as it continues to grow, it keeps its shape. You might have also stumbled upon the Fibonacci spiral as a symbol of hypnosis. In all fairness, there's little evidence you can confuse someone by making them stare into a spiral for a while. But its effects on our focus and our optic nerves can't be ignored. After you've stared at a spinning spiral, you might see how objects get smaller or bigger depending on the direction of the swirl. It's easy to understand why some experience this sensation as hypnotizing. This interesting series of numbers appears in our day-to-day -day lives, even if we don't notice it. It can also be used in more practical instances, like converting miles to kilometers. 
Let's look at the series 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13. Pick any two numbers side by side. Say 13 and 21. Do the calculations and you'll notice that 13 miles is about 21 kilometers. Same with 34 and 55. Music and math might not seem like they're connected. But if you had asked the great Mozart, he probably wouldn't have agreed. It seems he was very passionate about numbers from early on in his career. He loved finding cool number patterns in music, like some sort of hidden messages. His own sister even remembered him doodling math all the time, even on the sides of his music sheets. Some scholars believe he might have even played around with the Fibonacci numbers. If that's really the case, then he might have used the ration to balance out parts of his tunes. What about other types of art? Well, it's also said that Leonardo da Vinci used the golden ratio in his masterpieces, like the Vitruvian Man and the Mona Lisa. Also, when it comes to great pieces of architecture, the Parthenon might have used this pattern too. Anytime you see buildings with columns spaced just right, you can be certain that's where the builders drew inspiration from. The Great Pyramid of Giza is another great example. There's no official record to prove it, but the pyramid's shape is so close to the golden ratio that it's kind of obvious. You'll also see this pattern appearing naturally in our environment. Go out in our garden and check to see if you have any pine cones lying around. See those scales? They're set up in a pattern according to the Fibonacci sphere. Even the bones in our body seem to be growing based on the same proportions. We've got one torso, one head, and one heart. Then there's stuff that comes in pairs. Our arms, legs, eyes, and ears, for instance. For the number three, think about the composition of our limbs and the three main sections in our hand. The wrist part, the middle palm part, and our fingers, which are also split into three, by the way. Oh, speaking of fingers, their bone lengths have this ratio, too. This design helps our fingers move smoothly, especially when grabbing objects. The Fibonacci sequence can be seen in the way ocean waves curve and how rivers split and flow too. Weather patterns can also follow this rule. Some whirlpools and hurricanes form and spread out in the same way the Fibonacci spiral does. Zoom out and you'll see that spirals aren't just found here on Earth. They're also everywhere in space, and it isn't random. Most galaxies, including our Milky Way, are spirals. Think of it like this. Generally, stars in a young galaxy don't all appear at once. Some are faster when developing, others take their time. This makes gravity pull in different ways, making the young galaxy spin like a disk. As it spins, different levels of gravity stretch it into getting these spiral arms. On the flip side, if all the stars in a young galaxy appear at the same time, gravity just smushes it all into an egg shape, or what the astronomers call elliptical. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.